How good is this for a Sunday night treat? We've got James Ashby here along with Catherine Deves and lots to talk about with both of those beautiful people. So let's start with you first, James, here. The Morrison derangement syndrome. It really is Trump levels at the moment. He's gone, all right, everyone? Deal with it. He's gone, OK? So the news... I think John Fain, uh, the former ABC presenter, went off and did a story in the Channel 9 papers finding the former tourism minister who laid into the bloke who used to run tourism... Who cares? But he's part of the former minister having a whack at the former prime minister and... I don't care, but have a look. He must leave the parliament. The Liberal Party has to prove to the Australian public that it has listened... It has got the message and that it is prepared to adapt just as society is adapting and changing. It can't do that while Scott Morrison sits on those benches and is a constant reminder of all of the awful things that happened during the Morrison government. <laughs> You're not the only one who had to Google who is Fran Bailey today, but, oh, wasn't this news around. James, let it go! He's gone. I'm not imagining this Sheila or anyone of, of the ilk is going to be cheering in Peter Dutton at the next election. Who cares? Paul, I just finished washing the smoke from the campfire over the weekend while I was out of Claremont <laughs> out of my hair tonight. And I've got to say, you know, like uh, any good campfire, they're like, uh, it's, it's like a a light that draws moths, and everybody who came with their camp chairs and sat around did not talk about Scott Morrison. They spoke about how big a nugget they found or didn't find, <laughs> and the FJ45s who rocked up as part of drought relief out there. So wow. they're the things that people in ordinary parts of Australia are talking about. Look, we know that Scott Morrison, the longer that he stays in Parliament, the more of a gift he is to the Labor Party. And, uh, look... This shot has come from someone within the Liberal Party. I don't know whether this former minister still remains part of the Liberals, but the reality is the shots can no longer come from within the Liberal Party, so it's got to come from outside of the tent uh, because I think at the moment um, they want to try and find some unity as an opposition. So members of, of, of the government or the opposition at the moment will not be speaking out against Scott Morrison. So I don't know when Scott's going to go... I don't know, Catherine, you're not prepared to move over to Cronulla, are you, to fill the vacancy in the future, <laughs> eh? No, no, she's not answering. All right, very, <laughs> no, I'm very, very, oh, okay. very happy. Oh, but... Very happy on the beaches. Um... <laughs> she's all in on the beaches. All right, now, before I want to get to you about uh, teal matters first, though, Catherine, which is um, the teals are going to be running against the Liberal Party in New South Wales, and they're also going to run in Victoria. Now, in Victoria, I don't know what they're running against because mm -hmm. the Liberal Party is promising more health funding, more money for the Corruption Commission, and they want a bigger legislative target than even the federal government on climate. So I don't know what the reason is there. But then in New South Wales, again, it's a pretty lefty government that's there. Uh, they're not running against sort of the Christian right. This is just a way for people who hate the Liberal Party to find a way of... Um, preference harvesting to get rid of the Liberal Party, which is fine, but it's a hack. Just own it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think the voters need to understand that it is not a grassroots revolutionary movement. Um, the Teals, that were chosen by the faceless man, uh, Simon Holmes, are caught for his green business interests. And what will happen at the state level, obviously, uh, we've got the do donation caps and also issues with preferences. So um, I don't think we'll see the same thing play out at the state level, quite what we did at the federal level. Uh, however, they are a bit of a threat because they were put there by Labor and get up to hive off Liberal votes. Well, and guess what? One of the people who used to run uh, Get Up, of course, now is working for one of the Teals. Nothing to see here, of course. But we have this scenario where the Andrews government is flying on its way back to re-election. Their own failures led to about 800 people dying in 2020. Yet the New South Wales government looks like it is going to be uh, headed for the bin because, of course, all of the union will uh, or union movement will go nuts like they did in South Australia. What is it about Daniel Andrews, James, as just a student of politics, regardless of liking or disliking the dude? He is Teflon. Like, it is unbelievable how any of the things this bloke goes through leave him unscathed. Short memories, Paul. I don't, I don't understand how people have such short memories. But let's not also forget, you've got a really weak opposition down there in Victoria. This is the second chance Matthew Guy's had of leading an opposition. And I'm afraid to say he doesn't inspire me as a conservative. Now, I'm not from Victoria, 
but Conservatives here in Queensland certainly wouldn't be putting their hand up to vote for a bloke who's just come out only last month to legislate a 50% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions in a state like Victoria. Now, these are the things that I find really unusual about uh, Matthew Guy. This is why people don't see any real reason to shift over to him. Here he is talking about um, going down a hydrogen path, but he won't rule out using coal to produce hydrogen. So which is it, Matthew? Mm. You're a bit all over the shop. And look, he may have had a good win last week um, when it came to calling out the Premier down there in Victoria about the, uh, the ambulance ramping and certainly the hospital beds. But he's got a long way to go if he wants to prove that he is capable of leading a government in Victoria, because God help us, someone's got to get rid of Daniel Andrews.